Um, th this subject lends itself to interesting photos, uh, scans, uh, histology, everything, and, and that's all out there, but I'm not going to show you any of that because like you, most of the time we're just looking at the printed word on the page and we have to make a decision uh, and go into the room and tell the patient what's next. So how on the hook are you with these things? <clears throat> well, 2% uh, of CTs will have a pancreatic uh, cystic lesion. So you're almost certain to have, uh, have to, come to deal with this. Uh, it's a 50-50 split on whether it's going to be a neoplasia or not. Um, so, but even though you're going to have at least 1% of your CTs are going to have a neoplastic cystic lesion, there's some things you've got to remember that will help ease your conscience. One is, if it's less than 2 centimeters, it's going to have about a 0.1% chance that it's malignant. If it's greater, it's only a 0.2%. So even though if you're completely, if you're completely complacent, the odds are in your, your and your patient's favor. All right, so this is something we all had to deal with in residency. Um, basically, we'll begin by this, with this 50-50 split. There's, there's two categories of non-neoplastic cystic uh, pancreatic lesions, and then there's the neoplastic ones. So the first bit is uh, the inflammatory. Uh, these are, of course, local complications uh, from pancreatitis. Um, this is where history is so crucial. Um, and, can, and ease your anxiety, especially if you have old films. But you must always assume a 50% risk, right? We're talking again that there's a 50-50 chance it's neoplastic. If you don't have the history or you don't have old films and you're just not sure, you have to have a, a high index of suspicion. So inflammatory cystic lesions um, come with in two varieties, generally one with walls and one without. The ones that have walls are your pseudocyst and your walled off necrosis. Again, you can watch these develop with serial images, uh, even if you're coming from the back end of it. Uh, you'll, you'll see them develop. They're, they, um, they're usually, for example, the pseudocyst is outside uh, the pancreas and the uh, walled off necrosis can be intra or extra hepatic. And, and the di distinguishing feature is that you know, these aren't going to have a wall develop before four weeks. So a month down the road after inflammation, you see this uh, walled off lesion, you can feel fairly comfortable that's what you're dealing with. All right, so uh, the other ones are uh, cystic lesions, inflammatory cystic lesions without well-defined walls, um, acute peripancreatic fluid collections, again, less than four weeks to find uh, finding these from the previous slide, and then acute, acute necrotic collections that occur in less than four weeks, and after the onset of pancreatitis, it can also have liquid and solid material. You guys know all this, I know, but I'm trying to lay the, the groundwork here. So uh, then we have the other category, of their non-neoplastic uh, cystic lesions, four types again. Uh, your true cysts, these have cuboidal linings, uh, and they're rare. Uh, and of unclear natural uh, history. Retention cysts, they're small dilated pancreatic duct side branches, they're usually protonaceous obstruction, and uh, you, know, you see this in cystic fibrosis or chronic pancreatitis. Mucinous cysts, they've only recently been described, they're very difficult to differentiate from pancreatic cystic neoplasia. So, but one of the features that uh, may help you at least distinguish it from an introductal papillary neoplasm, which we'll get to, is that these do not have ductal communication. So remember that that's kind of a key feature in your imaging studies. If, if you see someone, if you see a report that says that it does communicate along with some other features, then you're probably dealing with an IPMN and there's a specific way to manage that. <clears throat> Lymphoepithelial cysts, they're rare, uh, peripancreatic and lined with squamous epithelium. They have a distinct layer of lymphoid tissue around it, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure that, they, that in, in the final analysis, you, these things are going to wind up coming out uh, in the wash because of something you did uh, to sample them. But so you're still on the hook because uh, pancreatic cystic neoplasias can cause pancreatitis. Um, so, an inflammatory cystic lesion cannot wholly be discounted. Or, again, what's the clinical presentation? Um, what's, uh, keeping a high index of suspicion, do you have any old images? Uh, the non-neoplastic pancreatic cysts, they're hard to distinguish. And you almost, you're almost always going to wind up getting histology on these. Um, 
So don't feel bad. Uh, if, if you were at, wind up sending a patient and you say, dang, gone, you know, if I could have just figured out it was one of those four non-neoplastic cystic lesions, we could have avoided this. Well, you're not alone. Again, remember, the 0.1% and the 0.2% rule. <clears throat> All right, so here's the meat of the lecture. Um, we've got, uh, um, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so these are the neoplastic cystic lesions. Again, four types, so we've got four, four, and four. Uh, so the thing is, is that there's varying ways to, to manage these. Some you can ignore, some you need to, to follow radiologically, others need to be aspirated, and then sometimes, right off the bat, you can send people to surgery. Now, the numbers you see here, I uh, fudged a little bit. I wanted them to be memorable. They're, they're vague and, and rounded up or down. But 50% of the time, these neoplastic lesions are going to be IPMNs, intraductal papillary mu mucinous neoplasias. 30% they're going to be mucinous cystic neoplasias. 15% will be serous cystic tumors. And 5% solid pseudopapillary neoplasias. I'm going to hopefully make these names go away and you'll remember them based on some other criteria. All right, so serous cystic tumors. This is the 15%. This is your SCT, your senior citizen tumor or grandma tumor. This happens in women, or by and large, and they're over 60. It can occur anywhere in the pancreas, and management is do nothing. You, you can base your decision on, this, on these criteria alone, uh, and I do. If the x-ray shows typical honeycomb appearance or a stellate scar, and I have a female who's over 60, I do nothing. I, I tell them, don't worry about it. No, and, you may even choose to not do further imaging, which saves cost, time, and money uh, in the long run. Oh, uh, also, we'll cover some of these aspiration results. That's why they're grayed out. I figure we'll try and sock, knock them out in the end. Now we have the mucinous cystic neoplasia. This is your 30%. This is mother should know tumor. These are mother tumors. Why? Because they occur when you are 40, almost exclusively, for at least 40 years old. Tail or body? Mostly uniocular, but you got to resect them. <clears throat> uh, that's the down and dirty on that. U.S. aspiration, we'll go, we'll go over the next slides. Okay, this is the sigma psi new tumor. These are the sister tumors, uh, the solid pseudopapillary neoplasias, women who are less than 35 years old. Tail or body? Um, you know, there's not really great distinguishing characteristics, but they may have solid components and calcifications. Again, resection. Now, these, these basic tips don't do anything, resect, resect, you've seen now. Um, these are based on malignant potential. It's exceedingly rare to have a grandma tumor uh, become malignant. <clears throat> so, uh, you may remember the song Lola from the Kinks. Uh, in that song, there is a um, line that says, girls will be boys and boys will be girls. This is to help you remember that IPMNs, which I always look at that word and think of the girl from Ipanema, so this is kind of convoluted, I know, but this is how it goes off in this brain. Um, men equal women, so you know, see predominantly women. Well, in this case, it's, it's the same. So, uh, and there are two different kinds, and they do have different uh, management strategies. Um, so these can be inside branches of the main duct. Uh, you'll see diffuse segmental dilation without stricturing. And there's communication with the duct. Remember, early slide, we talked about the, the cystic fibrosis uh, non-neoplastic tumor that did not conduct, uh, connect with the duct. Again, there's typical findings on, on aspiration. So here are your slam dunks. You have uh, prior images, and the clinical presentation fits uh, that of an alcoholic, and you, you know that this cyst formation has got to be inflammatory. Uh, you don't have to do anything, you manage the way you were trained. Uh, the second slam dunk is the grandma tumor, right? You have a 60 year old female, she's got a honeycomb uh, tumor or a stellate scar, no further workup, no imaging in the future. Uh, the other slam dunk is if someone is bold enough in radiology, and as we know their favorite plant is the hedge, uh, highly suspicious for main duct IPM, IPMN, uh, SPN, MCN, cystic degeneration of ad or adenocarcinoma, or neuroendocrine tumor, send them to surgery right away. Do not pass go. So, uh, 
again, to find, if you have a radiologist who would do that and says that, you need to keep that one because uh, that's going out on a limb and they don't like that. All right, so for all other uh, cystic tumors, we're, we're going to try and categorize them and manage them based on uh, size or risk of malignancy. If it's greater than two centimeters, then you send them to get the EUS with aspiration. Clear, right? Less than two centimeters, you may send them to get an EUS with aspiration if there's a solid component. Examples, epithelial nodule, thickened or irregular cyst wall, calcifications of the cyst, or their symptoms, back pain, abdominal pain, jaundice, weight loss, anorexia, steatorrhea, or there's dilation of the duct, greater than 5, uh, 0.5 centimeters, so 5 millimeters. Or, finally, family history. So you've got first degree relatives, there's been some pancreatic cancer, go ahead and send them. Uh, get the U.S. and put your mind at ease. <clears throat> Alright, so what if there aren't any of these malignant features? Well, so you've got a cystic lesion, it's less than two centimeters, and you're going to just repeat the MRI or CT with pancreatic protocol if they can't go in the MRI in a year. If it's stable, then just repeat it every two years. Is there a, ter a termination of the repeating? Uh, well, basically as long as you think that the patient is interested in uh, and can undergo surgery, you should keep doing the surveillance. Uh, that's pretty simple. And, you know, sometimes it's good to sit down and have a frank discussion with the patient and say, you know, what if this is cancer? Are you going to have a whipple? Are you going? And if their answer is clearly no, okay, we'll write it, document it, and, and make sure that uh, you've done so. And, you know, that, uh, I would stop the imaging at that point. All right, what if it's not stable? <coughs> uh, or malignant features developed, cyst size increases, then you're going to send your patients to the Boiling River Clinic uh, Advanced Therapeutic Endoscopy Center for an EUS with FNA. Yeah. All right. At this point, you can punt. Uh, you, you're, you're not, uh, shouldn't be expected to do much more management beyond getting them into the hands of your subspecialists. You should remember you've consulted two specialists now. And sometimes the most important uh, tool that you have in your toolbox is the telephone. And we don't get a chance to talk with one another enough in these days. Uh, so try it. it you, may be, you may find a new friend. Who knows? <laughs> All right. So let's say you did do an EUS with fine needle aspiration. You've already got it. It's on your desk now, you know, you and, or you're exceptionally curious and you say, uh, well, give me just a little bit more on, on this topic. Well, I wrote some slides on that. So, you, so here's your basic cyst analysis. Cytology. What can cytology tell you? Basically, is it, does it have glycogen or does it have mucin? If it is glycogen, is it a grandma tumor, you forget about it. If it's mucin, okay, uh, you know, you've got some work to do. What does CEA tell you? You get these reports on if you have them on your desk now. CEA just tells you is it mucinous or not. If it's over 192, it's probably mucinous, so you need to pay attention to that. The other thing is amylase. You know, if amylase is really high, it's, it's not going to be a mucinous tumor. These other ones, KRAS is a point mutation, it's mucinous. That's all it tells you, mucinous or not. GNAS, that's, a, that's, a, that's the girl from lymphedema. Uh, BHL mutation, grandma tumor, CT and NB1 sister tumor. I don't know much about those last two, but I do see those other two on reports from time to time. I mean, when, when I get aspirations. All right, this is uh, just a slide I want you to take with you, look it over. This kind of tries to distinguish each of these four separate neoplasias. If you have uh, aspirations, this is what you're going to get. Uh, or you're used to a nap to analyze it. Okay, so now that you have your uh, uh, aspiration, you can expand your slam dunk. So your expanded slam dunk includes knowledge of, of the cytology. So cytology shows, says it's suspicious for malignancy, surgery. The cyst is determined to be mucinous, right, but, and it's greater than three centimeters and associated with main duct dilation greater than 0.5 centimeters or has a definite neuronodule surgery. And then if these mutations are present with the TP53 and one of these other two groups, uh, I didn't know it was a touch screen. Uh, then again, surgery. <clears throat> All right, so everything.
everything I've said before was in the context of really not knowing what you're dealing with. You did not know when you saw the, the uh, two centimeter lesion that you sent to Dr. Lankarani or Dr. Nieto for aspiration what it was. But now you have determined it's mucinous and it is indeed an IPMN or your radiologist got out on a limb and told you it was an IPMN. So what do you do? So this is a little different. Um, if you have high-grade dysplasia on aspiration, surgical resection. If it's a main duct IPMN, not a side branch, it's a main duct IPMN, it's big fat sausage uh, main duct running through your pancreas, and the dilation is greater than 10 millimeters, resection. Duct dilation is only 5 to 9 millimeters, resection if there are these extra features, thickened walls, intraductal mucin, or mural nodules. So far, okay? Less than five millimeters. <clears throat> Just repeat the MRCP uh, or the CT every two years until you see thickened walls, introductal mucin or mural nodules. Then you resect. So, IPMN, main duct, three levels of ductal dilation determine what you do. <clears throat> okay, next is the branch duct. Um, there are reasons to send patients to surgery with these. The patient is jaundice. Uh, there's a solid component, component, or the main duct is greater than a centimeter. So, if the IPMN size itself is at least three centimeters, the main duct dilation is at least five millimeters. So, the first bullet is just regardless of the size. If you've got the main duct dilation, you're going to surgerize. If this, on the other hand, what if you have a big cyst, but then the duct isn't dilated as big as 10, 10 millimeters? Well, then these are the other reasons you would send the patient to surgery. So there is room for, for management by uh, simply uh, watching them. So here's a, here's a 30, uh, 30 millimeter uh, cyst uh, that has none of the other features. Repeat your imaging in a year and every two years. That should sound familiar. It's what we said with the, in the other... Um, uh, uh, format. What if it's 10 to 30 millimeters? <clears throat> Repeat in a year, every two years. After five years, you can uh, lengthen your intervals to every three years. Okay, finally, less than uh, 10 millimeters in size, uh, the cyst that is, you repeat in a year, then every two years, after five years, if it's stable, you stop. So that's a side branch introductal papillary mucinous neoplasia. And that's it. So, <laughs> so I go back to these slides all the time. I get the thing on my desk and I see the cystic thing and I try and match it up and, and I go step by step. And you can do it too. And if you have any, if, if, if something doesn't seem to square, there's always a, the wonderful resource up to date. And you should be using it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Herbie. Great job.